The way you deal with an underperforming team member is to first start communicating with this person to see what's going on. So first you need to have the data because you need to analyze the situation, you need to diagnose the situation. And diagnosis is the first part of every solution you know, process. So diagnose the problem. How do you do that? By having conversation with this person. And how do you have a conversation? Guess how? Yes, by listening. Listen, 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 listen. And when there's nothing more to be said, ask, ask, ask. And then listen more, and then ask and listen more. Until you have all the picture. And ask things from different directions, at so many different, different levels intellectually, emotionally, whatever, from so many different directions. How it feels, why it's so, just take it in without any judgment. And only when you have all this data from listening and from probing patiently, then you can now properly diagnose and then come to a conclusion. Is it a technical problem? Is it something that relates to this person, let's say, not having proper tools, not having, let's say, clear instructions? not having proper training, proper skills, what is it? What is it? Do they have the resources that are required to perform as per your expectations? Find out. If that's the case, then sort it out. Train them, give them clear instructions, you know, give them the right tools, the resources, whatever that is. So remove the cause of the problem. What if the problem could, could be you? Maybe you're not following up properly because people need follow up. And if you're a boss, regardless where you stand in the hierarchy, one of your main responsibilities, duties, your job is to follow up. Follow up. It's not just on you know trying to monitor things and catch mistakes at an early stage or make an intervention before things become worse. No, it also shows a sign of attention. When you're following up with people, you know, doing it properly, of course, people feel that they're valued. People, you know, feel that you're paying attention to them, that their work matters if you do it properly. Do it with an eye of, you know, with an approach, an attitude of a support person, not I'm waiting for you to make a mistake or, you know, big brother is watching you. No. How are you doing? Let's see. How can we do this better? Well done. Maybe this needs fine tuning. So follow up, it's your job to follow up if it's your team. I'm not talking about other teams that are not, you know, do not belong to you. Your team makes it your responsibility, professional duty. So follow up. Now, if it's, matter, if it's a matter relates to some exceptional situations that your people are going through, then maybe you have to be considerate in this case. If it's a human condition, people, you know, we get depressed, we lose people tough things happen in our personal life and we're not immune you know our work could be influenced by this then you need to be appreciative of this fact and you need to measure it accordingly if it's something that you can you know accommodate that's fine if it's something that's beyond your accommodation you know then you have to act appropriately in whatever is you know fair to this person and fair to the business if it's required let's say you know a person takes a few days one week whatever off whatever that is, until they sort out their problems that is causing their low performance, then maybe you can do that. But if it's something going to take years, let's say, you're not a therapist, you're not a, you know, you're not a psychologist, you're not, you're not a family member, so you can't exceed the limits of your capabilities or, you know, boundaries of your profession. So maybe you need to act in a way that preserves the company's interest you make that judgment it's complicated because every case is different if it's a matter that relates to attitude you know there's nothing wrong with the tools or clarity of roles and targets and you're following up everything is fine but there is an attitude issue with this person or this person there is a limitation in their capabilities you've trained them you've given them support you've coached them and you name it but still no progress, then maybe they've reached their own intellectual limit. And people vary. You know, some people have 140, 150, 155, 160 maybe IQ. And some people have 100, and some people have 90, and some people have even 80. 100 is average. 10% of people have 
around you know 80 over 100 as an IQ so it's fact of life maybe 20 percent or so 30 percent have 90 over 100 in terms of IQ so maybe it's a limitation of IQ maybe if let's say they're 130 in terms of IQ but the job is so complicated it's over their limit it's, it's a scientific thing so if that was the case if there is if it's an IQ thing because you've done everything training education you name it then you need to maybe reallocate that person into a job that is within their limit so that they can produce and the result is okay is good and they don't get frustrated and you know everybody is happy the right person in the right place but if it's an attitude issue just because of negativity or you know bad intentions or destructive behavior then you can I mean you can of course send one signal two signals three signals have number of conversations that this has to be you know corrected discipline that person within the limits of whatever is professional ethical and moral and legal of course within whatever is within your powers if that is not um, working then you have to let go of these people because you don't want bad apples <laughs>